Today's video is going to be about making this really cool light bulb table runner. This is a table runner and it has the whole rainbow effect from one end to the other and it makes this really great, oh, we're gonna say it's about five and a half feet tall table runner. Um, I don't normally finish my demo projects on Maker Monday videos, but I really think Rebecca's gonna like this, so I'm gonna give it to her when, um, after Christmas in July is over, because she loves Christmas and she likes rainbows, so here we go. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to make this shape right here of this light bulb, because I know you're looking at that shape going, um, no, check please, I got you, okay? It ain't even me. It ain't even that great. It's simply the fact that this ruler does all the work for you. So this is the mini quick curve ruler by So Kind of Wonderful. See this curve right here? I, I don't know what the degree is. It's a light, it's a nice soft curve. What I'm gonna demo is how to make a shape like this. Why would I wanna make a shape like this? Well, because I wanna make this table runner right here. So this is the pattern that we're gonna to feature today. As per all of my demos, I don't give you any measurements or specific instructions because I do appreciate when you buy the pattern from the pattern designer. I mean, my brain couldn't come up with this. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is show you some tips on using this ruler to cut. So the first shape we wanna make is the pattern tells you exactly what size squares to start with. We're gonna make this first sort of um, convex shape that's gonna make the inside of our light bulb. So in the pattern, it tells you exactly where to line things up. This is a six inch square. So the thing you really wanna remember is you want to center most of the time. Now every pattern that they make is a little bit different. It tells you exactly where to center this up. So we're gonna center this up on the ruler and we're gonna cut it where the pattern tells us to cut it so that we get our convex shape in the right spot. My first tip with working with this ruler is, especially until you're really comfortable with it, I would use a 28 millimeter cutter because you can get around the curve better. I'm gonna make sure that when I hold on to this ruler, I put at least one or two fingers off the ruler because otherwise it'll slide a little bit. So I've got my ruler lined up where I want it. I'm gonna open my blade. And normally when I hold my blade, I hold it kind of down low. For this um, application, I'm gonna hold it almost at a 90 degree angle and cut around that curve. And I'm doing it pretty slow because I don't want this ruler to slip. And then you can pull away that tiny bit of scrap. We have our convex curve. Now we wanna cut the concave side of it. So we're gonna, we're gonna to join these up. So I'm gonna line this up based on where, where the pattern tells me to because I'm basically making the other side of the curve. So I'm gonna slide it over to this side. Same thing, I'm gonna cut through two layers here because I want both sides of this to happen at the same time. So I can make two cuts at once. Again, I'm gonna use my smaller blade. Oh, I've got this separated. We can throw this away. We can't really do anything with that. All right, so now I have this curve that's gonna fit in there. Here's a couple of tips that I have found helpful with working with this. Now, each of these patterns give you different measurements of where everything's supposed to lay out, but we're gonna sew on a curve, and we're gonna do this without pins. So the pattern tells you to measure or to line up this with this, I'm gonna turn this over so you can see it, to line these two up with this, and you flip this over, and we're gonna leave about a quarter inch from here to here. I don't eyeball that very well, and I don't eyeball um, how where I want this angle to be very well. So what I do is I take this edge over here and just use a regular ruler and measure so we know what a scant quarter inch, I measure kind of a fat quarter inch. It's not quite three eighths, but it's just a little bit fatter than normal. See how there's my quarter inch line? There's my three eighths line. I'm kind of halfway between those. 
So this is kind of the opposite of a scant quarter inch. It's a fat quarter inch. And I'm just gonna make a mark with my friction pen. It doesn't really matter how long the mark is. What you wanna see is when you, when you match this up to here that you can see the line on your curve. The other thing I have found helpful is to not put it straight like that. But if you angle it so you have pretty much a, a equilateral triangle here, this little thing that's hanging over looks equal on either side, that seems to be the way that works the best. It also lines up the beginning of this curve with the beginning of the other curve. So I will usually stack these all up and pin them all at the same time and then carry them over to my machine. I've got my quarter inch foot on because we all know how much I love my quarter inch foot. I also have the pivot turned on on my machine. I think that's really important. So I'm gonna put my foot down. The first thing I wanna pay attention to is that when I take a stitch into my fabric, I'm only in the background white fabric. I'm gonna take a couple of stitches, that's gonna lock it in place. Then I wanna take about two stitches into the colored top piece of fabric and then take my pin out. Now we're gonna sew this curve without pins. So we wanna make sure that we've tacked that in there. So take one or two stitches, you don't have to back stitch it, but take one or two stitches to hold that together. And then you wanna make sure that your needle's down and your foot is up. If you don't have pivot function on your machine, your knee lift is really handy right now because you can lift the foot up. What I'm gonna do is take one piece of fabric in one hand and the other piece of fabric in the other hand. So see, they can separate, but they're in the machine. If we pull, if I pull on this bottom piece, look, if I pull it, it goes straight, makes a straight line. If I pull this one, it's a little less straight. You know, you don't get the straight line from the convex curve, only from the concave curve. So what I'll do is I'll pull the bottom one straight. Can you see that? Can you see on the top of there? So I've got that straight. Then what happens is this will line up for uh, an inch, inch and a half or so. So if I hold them flush to each other and sew until I get to my finger, take my finger away, match up another inch or so, sew till the foot hits my finger. Okay, and we're just gonna slowly stitch all the way down this curve just like this. When we get to the bottom here, I like to have a stiletto at this point, but my pointy stiletto is uh, not in front of me right now. So you wanna make sure that you get sewn all the way off the end. Now you'll notice where we came out at the end here, you have a quarter inch down here too. Now this looks kinda like a hot mess because, well, it is. This doesn't look like anything yet but it does look like a nice curve. Okay, so now we're gonna talk pressing. I like steam on my iron for this because steam is gonna help balance out this curve that we've sewn. If you lay this right sides down, this is gonna stick straight up. There's a lot, it just sticks straight up. So if you were to take your fingers and just sort of push this down, do you see how the curve just nicely wants to go toward, think of this like a pie and the crust wants to go toward the pie. Put the steam on my machine and I start in the middle. I don't wanna stretch this out, but I'll start in the middle with the steam on and then I'll press the iron to one side and then the other side. You'll notice I am not ironing. I'm not going back and forth. I'm just steaming that down and look at how flat that is. All right, now this doesn't look that pretty yet. So I'm gonna give you a couple of extra tips to make this line up better. The pattern tells me where I'm gonna line this up at. So on this particular pattern, we want to center our block in the middle and it's not even straight. I mean, it's kind of crooked. Hot tip, if I want to measure that the middle is on this two line right here, right? A quarter inch is always the magic place when we quilt, right? So if here's my quarter inch, which is gonna be basically the center, this quarter inch bit right here away from the two, if I line that up with the tip of the, of the curve that I just sewed, and then I line the quarter inch up down here as well. Okay, so I've got quarter inch lined up 
where the color changes on both of them. Then I'm going to cut away this side of the curve. If you line it up right on the measurement, you don't get enough to make a seam allowance. Okay, so since we trimmed it like that, we have enough of a seam allowance. So we already had our other, we have the other side of our pie crust, right? So now you can see how that's going to go together. This quarter inch bit is important. Now for this particular pattern, we're going to square it up so that we can sew the bottom of our, our little light bulb on. So do yourself a favor in this step. And whichever end has the bigger quarter inch seam, use that one for this because we're going to cut this bottom one off anyway. So if this one's a little short and you don't have quite a quarter inch, doesn't matter. You aren't going to use it anyhow. We're going to mark that quarter inch again on this end of our piece. Remember we did that little fat quarter inch on the one end? So if we line that dotted seam up with the line we just made here, now we know where our quarter inch is going to end up. So I only put a pin in here long enough to take this to the machine. And then we're going to go and sew just like we did before. So now we have this shape that looks a little bit like a funky cat eyeball. This is the side we already pressed. This is the side that's sticking up. So again, we're going to press from the middle with steam and press all of that down. So here's our weird wonky block, right? Look, this isn't straight. This isn't straight. This is wider than the top is. It doesn't matter because we're going to trim this to the size that we want. The pattern tells me exactly what size I need this to be. Um, the key is for this particular go is that I'm, I'm going to use this two inch mark as a line. Okay, so here's, here's the two inch runs right through the middle of that light bulb. The important part here is this quarter inch line up here. We want to make sure that we're not cutting off the tip of that light bulb, right? We want to make sure the whole light bulb's in here. So I'm going to line up my two inch right down the middle of the bulb and the quarter inch up here. Then I'm going to cut away the side and the top. Now, if I wanted this to be a whole light bulb, then I could line it up again and make sure that I've got the quarter inch at the other end. But I don't need that because we're going to make this a little bit smaller so that we can put the, the plug part of our light bulb, right? There's one other tip I want to give you about this pattern. And then um, I'm going to finish sewing this whole um, table runner together and show you the end result. If you're ever reading a pattern that says, Take a whole bunch of these size squares and sew them together. You can if you like. I am not knocking that pattern, that plan. But in this particular pattern, and I don't remember exactly what the measurements were, I just cut my strip sets. Let's say that you need to sew a two inch block to a two inch block to a two inch block. And you gotta make like 20 of them. Do yourself a favor and cut strip sets. So I talked about this in a pattern a couple of weeks ago. And in fact, they have showed this pic this quilt this quilt here that's hanging right here. This is my invaders quilt. This pattern was one of those ones that said to cut one and a half inch squares here and 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 I don't want to do that. So instead, I did what I'm about to show you now. I made strip sets to make this four patch, sewed them all together as a strip set, pressed them all toward the green fabric and then cut them into one and a half inch strip sets. Okay, I did not cut these all apart and then sew them together one at a time. So this is, this is how you do that. So I'm gonna show you how you do that strip set. So in this particular pattern, and I don't remember what the measurements were, this is a two inch strip, right? Yeah, so there's a two inch strip. And then what we're making is the little plug part of the light bulbs, right? So. I have a white strip, a green strip, a white strip. I'm going to sew these together and then I'm going to press them toward the solid fabric. So as soon as I'm going to make this strip set, I don't, I, I'll show you some tips on making strip sets, but I'm just going to sew this to this and this to this, and then we're going to press it. 
My preferred way of cutting strip sets is to use my block lock strip set ruler. I know this ruler looks really weird and kind of nondescript, but what it has is a crack, you know, the block lock um, lock on point, both this way and this way. What that does is it lets you cut strip sets that are longer than others. So if I take my, if I take my ruler and put it on this on the strip set and find a seam to lock onto because I've got that groove. Since I press toward my dark, I'm gonna lock onto the dark. So look at what happens. See how this is a, just a little bit wonky right there? When I take my block lock ruler and lock it onto the seam, everything falls into formation. It's like Beyonce formation right there, okay? I'm gonna straighten up this side and then I can start cutting my strip sets. Now, I don't remember what the pattern called for in this, and in this case, it doesn't really matter, but I've got two inch, two inch, two inch. So most of the time when you cut strip sets, you're trying to make squares. So I'm gonna cut a two inch strip set with this ruler. So my ruler counts from both directions, so you can use it right or left handed. Here's one, two inches. So if I lock my ruler, onto that middle seam and slide it over to the two, I can cut a perfect strip set. That is a perfect strip set and I don't have to sew these tiny pieces together. We have all of our shapes made, right? Um, the pattern, I think there's 19 of them. Shows you how to make strip sets. So I cut a strip set. All we're gonna do is sew this onto here, okay? The pattern gives you the rest of the instructions for what size to cut the side pieces that make it um, stagger, what size to cut the middle part that looks like the cord for the lights. So that part is pretty straightforward. And if you've done any quilting, you can work those out for yourself. Um, Another tip that I'm going to give is in the in the make in the patchwork part of it, do yourself a favor when you join these on, you sew this together, press this toward the light bulb. When you sew the sections that attach next to it, sew toward the solid piece. And then things are going to lay a lot flatter. All right? So, I hope um I hope you're a little let less mystified by the shape that I made these light bulbs with. You're going to need the um, quick curve ruler. This is the mini size. This is the size you're going to need to make these light bulbs. Then we used our 28 millimeter rotary cutter. You're also going to want fresh blades in this. So having a good new blade is going to make cutting that curve a whole lot easier. So if you already have one of these, do yourself a favor and pick up a set of um, new blades. Then we'll talk about the pattern that I used today, which is this one the mod lights pattern. I made this table runner, but you can use the same technique and make the same light bulbs and you can do hanging lights, you can do a tree skirt, you can do a tree to hang on the wall. That's the fun stuff that makes this great runner. Okay, so try it out. If you've never tried it, it's one of those great techniques where you don't have to be perfect and it doesn't even really have to line up that much because you can trim it down with the ruler and I love those kind of projects. So uh, go, go forth and make circles. See you later.